Everyone stand by, standing by. I didn't tell anybody for the first 12 years that we were doing it by hand. Well, we have some machines and we do this and we do that, you know. I didn't want to say. I kept it a secret. And it wasn't until I did an interview in 2004, uh, Brooks Barnes did a great piece and we were having uh, dinner together and somehow it slipped out. I said, well, you know, we do it by hand. And Brooks looked at me <laughs> and he put his pencil down and he said, Trip. He said, this is going to be a front page story on the Wall Street Journal. I said, really? He said, yes. He said, it's amazing. And so word got out then that, that we did it by hand. I know that the effect could not be done on the level that it is with the confetti machines that are out there. That instantaneous, that much confetti. We actually disperse 3,000 pounds each year. And it's actually, uh, it starts as recycled paper already. It's 100% uh, biodegradable, flame retardant. How many people volunteer? We've gotten to the point where we try and limit it to 80 to 100 people. This is the 30th year orchestrating this effect and uh, making it all happen. And as I tell many people, <laughs> when you do something 30 times, and it's on a yearly basis, you get old. So uh, I hope to continue to do this as long as I can still get around. It's, it's something that's very hard for me to talk about because uh, it's very emotional for me to see just these waves of confetti in the crowd, you know, cheering and, and going crazy. And of course the ball, and it's just a, a very emotional thing for me. Goosebumps, and whether I'm participating in, in, in dispersing or not, it never gets old. It just never gets old. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with your applause, please welcome to our stage our first participant tonight, Treb Heining. Mr. Treb Heining. Come on out, Treb. How are you, sir? Treb is your name? Treb. Heining. Heining. All right, sir. You nailed it, Dave. Treb, where are you from? Southern California, Newport so, Beach. <laughs> and uh, what do you do for a living, sir? Uh, I'm in the balloon business. I, uh... <laughs> hey, you get some I, I of that balloon money, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you, you can live in Newport Beach. I, uh, I pioneered the uh, use of balloons in special events and parties for the past 16 years, and now I represent one of the largest manufacturers of balloons in the world. This is amazing. This, <laughs> this is the man who had the idea of balloons at parties. My name is Treb Heining, and I'm in the uh, balloon and confetti business, primarily balloons. Yeah, my first, uh, my first job when I was 15 was working at uh, the original Disneyland in Anaheim, California. It was a dream come true for me. I uh, always wanted to get a job there. But in the beginning, yeah, I was just selling balloons. They had a parade at Christmas time, and the parade had a train in it and it was parked in the back area of, of Disneyland, and uh, we had to go back there twice a day and fill helium balloons into these cars, these uh, train cars. And the idea was that as it went down Main Street and everything, the little elf would run around, and, and every once in a while they would pull a string and one of the cars would release the balloons. We hated going back there to blow up the balloons, but that's where I learned the basic thing that was gonna change my life later, uh, which was how to tie balloons really fast. <laughs> Today, Thursday, December 30th. Hey, Trevor, part of the crew this year. I'm calling because uh, I'm definitely not feeling well. So, you know, in lieu of everything going on, I don't think obviously we're not going to take a risk and come out this year. Like, Let me see. The ball dropped last year. It was limited in terms of no crowd because the fears were very high. We didn't have vaccines back then and so the effect was gonna be limited. We only contacted about four buildings and the idea was to do a dusting of confetti for the cameras and to at least honor the tradition. 
very sad that there was nobody in the street, no cheering. Is this year a reunion? It definitely is, because we'll be out in force this year. We've had a lot of cancellations, but for everybody that's here, I think it's going to be a very powerful year. People are in health. Just let us know. Yeah. Good. We're good. Thank Thanks you. so much. We'll see you tomorrow night. See you does it get any better than that? I don't think it does. <laughs> what was the big break in the balloon business? Um, I would talk about it uh, when I would be at a shopping center opening, let's say in Baltimore or something, they would interview me and I, well, what's on the horizon? I'd say, we're, we're gonna be doing the uh, opening ceremonies for the Olympic Games in 1984. I had not talked to a producer, I had not, not talked to anybody from the Olympics, but I just told people that's what we were going to do. And because um, I believed a lot in the power of an idea. If you put it out there, then things will fall into place. Well, sure enough. Welcome to the opening ceremonies of the games of the 23rd Olympiad at Los Angeles. When we did the opening ceremonies of the 1984 Olympic Games was what put us on the map, but also it showed people around the world a whole different side of what balloons could do. And it really, an industry had started at that point, but that made it blossom. And that's why I'm looked at upon as the father of the balloon industry now. Uh, people that know balloons and everything know that it started with a kid that knew how to tie balloons fast, but it, it grew into something like that. Is this the longest running event I've been a part of? Absolutely. I can't think of anything else other than my own birthday or something that, that you know, we've celebrated this many times. I might have the idea to do the event, but it is the team that makes it happen. It's a huge family. The camaraderie of, of doing this and marking the new year every year together under all kinds of circumstances, sometimes it's 20 below zero but they show up, they dedicate themselves to this, to making this effect happen and participate in something that is just overwhelming when you're watching it with the naked eye. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Welcome to the 2021-2022 Confetti Dispersal Engineer Orientation! <laughs> I cannot thank you enough for being here tonight on such a challenging year and all the things that all of us have been through. But we are the ones who provide the magic for the evening. Now, we're gonna do the roll call in alphabetical order. Uh, Lauren Arnenson. Yeah. There she is. How many years, Lauren? Uh, 14 for Woo! Yeah! Mary, you, you said it's 20 years this year for you, right? <laughs> she, she doesn't even look like she's 25 years old. Look at her. <laughs> okay. uh, Joan Vandervelt, here. That's my mom. Lost my mom this last year. Uh, Winnie Wynn. No, didn't make it. I, that's one of my other favorite names, though. Winnie Wynn. Wouldn't you love to be a Winnie Wynn? You know, Paul. And um, now, how do we do the confetti? How do we make a confetti blizzard? When I finally say, go confetti, and your crew chief yells, go, go, go confetti, what you want to do is take a clump of confetti and try and throw it across the street and do another one as fast as you can, another one, and another one, and another one. And so it's something like this, you know? Okay? So now let's clean this up and then we'll go on. Okay. Um, <laughs> so tonight, I need all of your help more than ever so that we can show the world, we can show New York, we can show the United States that the show must go on. Okay? That's what we're going to do tonight. That's the spirit. But my last question to you is, do you think you can do this? Yes! <laughs> well, I'm going back to my hotel, and um, let me know how it goes, okay? <laughs> Lo and behold, I get a call in 1991 from Peter Coleman, and they had started a company in Times Square 
called the uh, Business Improvement District. So Peter says, I want to talk to you about designing some things because we're now in charge of the ball drop. And I said, well, Peter, it's obvious that the first thing we should try is confetti. I mean, it, it, it's, a, it's a natural. It had never been done before, never orchestrated. And so he said, okay. It was a hard sell in the beginning, but I lined up eight of the buildings in the bow tie of, of Times Square for that first year. In the minute just before midnight, and I'm always nervous. There's certain things I can't control, the wind currents and things like that. You know, you just have to stay on your game at that point and make sure you give the cue at the right time. Everyone stand by, standing by. Go confetti, go confetti, go confetti. Creating magic is taking people out of their normal, normal day-to-day -day, uh, existence and for a second giving them something that uh, is emotional, is uh, spectacular, that makes them say, wow, <laughs> something that's a little overwhelming. And if you can get a tear in the eye and a lump in the throat, that's all the better. <laughs>